Welcome to Lantern's Insight, where we take Magic the Gathering's long lore, break it down, and dramatically retell it back to you. All characters and art are owned by Magic the Gathering, Wizards of the Coast, and Hasbro. If you want to learn more about Magic the Gathering, the game, please visit the links down below. In a small village nestled in the Uvenwald woods, the townspeople gather. They speak of local troubles and rumors, most notably that maddening itch feeling at the base of their necks. Something is amiss in Keswick. When suddenly the townkeeper bursts into the meeting, ring the town bell, she's dead, he killed her. Elena and Helena, hunters who lived in the woods, sprang into action while the town devolves into an unruly mob. They liked working alone better, as the townspeople are fickle in their superstitions at best. Hal and Elena would do better protecting them from the outside. In a flash, they are in the room that the Pelters rented. Deep pools of crimson blood greet them. Elena takes the whole scene in motionless. Hal watches her work. She had always been the best tracker of the two, tireless in her craft. Elena carefully opened the door to a closet, revealing a chair with thick leather straps. Hal aired the thought. Mr. Pelter was a werewolf and killed his wife, but Elena wasn't too sure. There was a lot of blood, but no bone, no hair. Hal stopped her partner's train of thought, taking her into the shadows. Elena was the tracker, but Hal was the hunter, and the townspeople had come. Best not to be seen at the scene of the crime in front of a paranoid mob. As they followed the tracks of the now-woven Mr. Palter, Hal recounts when she saw him on the road. He looked frightened then and traveled with his wife to the town. Poor Mrs. Palter. He left his home behind but couldn't leave the person he loved the most behind to keep her safe. With a quick look to Elena, Hal wondered if she could do different. Soon they found something, but not exactly what they expected. Mr. Palter, still very human, was tied to an altar among other townspeople, all very dead and drained of blood. Behind them, Mrs. Palter was chanting, Or Menahal, Or Menahal, Or Menahal. Mr. Palter was no werewolf, but a husband trying to keep his possessed wife safe. He begged for them not to hurt her, that it was his fault, but the two hunters tackled the woman anyway. The two were no match for the unholy power of Mrs. Palter, and quickly she threw them away. Hal was disoriented, vision spinning, and watched in horror as Mrs. Palter frees her knife to slay Elena until a huge, hulking werewolf is on top of the Dark Woman, ripping her to shreds. Hal and Elena recover and are back to back, silver flashing in the moonlight. They're surrounded by werewolves. One, no, two dozen. When did a Hal pack this large reemerge? The Curse Mute had cured most of them. A silver wolf steps forward. Hal is about to react when she stops dead in her tracks. It turned into a human. No wolf can do that in the heat of battle. With only a sharp snarl, Arlen the Planeswalker sends the Hal Pack away, tail between their legs. Arlen turns back to the hunters. I will tell you this only once. You must cease your killing of my pack. And if you don't, I will end you. Whatever is out there is worse than werewolves. This world will need us soon. It will welcome the sound of our howl the muscle of our pack. We may be the only force that can stand against whatever is threatening it. Arlen is a wolf again, and then she is gone. This is Under the Silver Moon, the first chapter of Shadows Over Innistrad's story. Stay tuned for the next chapter in just a few short days. This first chapter is really to set the stage for us, giving us the dark gothic mood of the plane and introducing our wonderful character Arlen. If you want to know more about her, links on the screen and down below. Hal and Elena aren't likely going to be used again, and I don't think they're very important characters, but this first chapter is what writers call opening the world, and is simply just that. It's used to get the best picture of the world. A lot of times characters involved in this don't even matter in the long run, like say like the first victim in Jaws. As long as it does a good job in showing us what the world is and the rules of this world. It's super important in a fantasy or sci-fi setting, so I'm glad to see that Kimberly Cranes included it. Do you guys think that this captured the world of Innistrad well? Could it use a different setup? Let me know, I want to hear from you. As always, tap that subscribe button, float a like, and cast your comment down below. I'm Lantern, and this was Lantern's Insight.